Hello, I'm Dr. Carol Eldridge, and I'm the Director of Graduate Programs at Chamberlain College of Nursing. I am joined today by National League for Nursing Chief Executive Officer Dr. Beverly Malone and Chamberlain President Dr. Susan Gronwald for a special discussion about the role of education in the advancement of the nursing profession, as well as the future of education in our industry. Last year, Chamberlain joined the National League for Nursing to announce the establishment of the NLN Chamberlain College of Nursing Center for the Advancement of the Science of Nursing Education. This joint mission is particularly significant in today's healthcare environment, as a shortage of nurses and nurse educators continues to affect the health of our nation. Building on the League's and Chamberlain's strong nursing education foundation, this partnership creates a platform from which we can continue to encourage excellence in nursing education and the scholarship of teaching. What is the Center for the Advancement of the Science of Nursing Education? In nursing, we, we've all come to understand that there is evidence-based nursing practice and that it is essential. It's the only way to give care but we have not gotten the piece that there also needs to be evidence-based nursing education. And that's what the center is totally about. How will partnering with Chamberlain help you reach your goals? I'm of the belief that every time nursing can come together, that our organizations can actually join forces, that we're moving ahead, that we're helping the three million nurses that are out there and all those that are students coming to move to a, a better place in terms of academic preparation. So how will partnering help Chamberlain reach its goals of advancing healthcare worldwide? Our vision is to produce extraordinary nursing professionals that transform healthcare, and the only way to do that is through outstanding academics. And so what we're very excited about is to be able to work with our colleagues at the National League for Nursing and all over the country, um, probably the world. That's right. Pull together our resources and data to finally address evidence-based uh, nursing education. How can we help our faculty to be extraordinary? Well, of course, many of them already are. Uh, and the good news is they all want to be. So the, the research that we will be doing, the evidence-based uh, uh, nursing education, will help us to know that what we're teaching faculty, how we're teaching faculty to teach students, we can have a confidence that is really going to make a difference. So what is the difference between the two? You know, we have the research in clinical nursing, what works at the bedside. So what's different then about research in nursing education? Well, it, it's really focused on the pedagogy, how we teach in the classroom, how we teach online, teaching methods, teaching methodology, curriculum, mm -hmm. focused on, on teaching and learning, different learning styles of students. The better job we do of that in nursing, the better patient care we'll have. We are, we're starting to understand that it's not how many hours you sit in clinical or you stand in clinical or you sit in class, that competency has to do with it. So some people may get it in uh, a 10 hour course period, some people may get it in a five hour course period. We haven't tested that, we haven't built it in, we're not doing research, enough research on that. That's what we need. We owe it to our students, and we owe it to the people who we provide care to. Susan, why is academic progression so critical, and how does it impact or affect the nursing shortage and the nurse faculty shortage? Well, the nursing shortage is not because there aren't people interested in nursing. A large part of it is a shortage of faculty. We have to educate nurses at higher and higher levels for better patient care, but also so that we can prepare more individuals who are prepared at the level to help teach our students. So getting master's degrees, doctoral degrees, so they can help teach students is critically important to that cycle to help with the nursing shortage. Bev, the NLN has taken a stand on academic progression too, I know. So what's your perspective on that? The data show that a nurse only goes back to school one time. Mm -hmm. The average nurse, one time. And so it becomes really critically important that when he or she goes back to school, that they get as much preparation as they possibly can. 
And how can we help them move from that baccalaureate to the master's or to the PhD? How can we help uh, an associate degree colleague move not just to the baccalaureate, but to the master's degree? Because it may only be one time that they go back to school. So how does ha having a good education and, ha and having good faculty, how does that connect to better health care? Part of what we do at the League is trying to make sure our faculty know their treasures. And, um, I, and that's fun. I mean, you know, waking our colleagues up who are faculty and teachers to the fact that you are a national treasure and how can we help you develop? And I think that's an interesting point. So you're helping to elevate nurses, nursing faculty, the profession as a whole. So how does that help me when I'm sick? How do I feel that if I'm a patient? Uh, the better job we do teaching our students for where healthcare is going to be or, or teach them to lead healthcare where it needs to be, uh, the better the patient care. You've both mentioned the challenges that we're facing in nursing and in nursing education specifically. So how can we help our nurses, our nursing faculty, to be prepared to meet those challenges? Chamberlain does excellent work with simulations. And I think that's a real opportunity to make a difference in the lives of our students and their level of preparedness, of uh, bringing um, scenarios that they would never encounter. I think one of the ways we're getting there is uh, much tighter communication and collaboration among uh, nursing education institutions and practice institutions to understand what the future needs are going to be, not just hospitals, but those primary care facilities, affordable care, uh, accountable care organizations to understand what their needs are so that we can be educating the nurse of the future. The, the other thing I would say is that I'm hoping that we'll start teaching our students about systems and understanding the system that they're in, including the teaching and learning system that they're in, but also the hospital and primary care and um, older adult care home systems that they're in. So they're just not trying to figure out what hit them. Where do you ladies hope nursing will be in five years? And how will nursing education help support this evolution? With the Affordable Health Care Act and so many opportunities, uh, I, I see nurses at the table helping to make decisions for how health care is going to be delivered. But I also see us as team players. I think nurses are wise enough to know that there's situational leadership according to what the patient, the family, the community needs. We'll be able to move back and forth in those interprofessional roles and work with our colleagues who are physicians and pharmacists on a, a level playing field in terms of teams coming together to serve the patients. We need to be educating nurses for the future and helping them to develop the critical thinking skills and the knowledge about healthcare systems and global health that can help them be leaders and at the table to, uh, to help in, in the decisions that we're going to be faced with in this country. And I think that all of our healthcare organizations and professions need to step up and say that we're providing a workforce that's going to be there to take care of the people that we see who are needing care and services. I'm going to be needing care and services, so I'm going to be very demanding too. <laughs> <laughs> so how will the center uh, function in all this? What do you hope to accomplish in the next year at the center and in the next five years? The National League for Nursing and our colleagues at Chamberlain have one of the most unique and collaborative partnerships that moves the nursing profession and nursing education, the science in particular, forward. I think we can be quite a role model for how that can happen and for how two organizations can work together on behalf of patient care and on behalf of nursing education. And now we'd like to continue this conversation by meeting a student from Chamberlain College of Nursing's Master of Science in Nursing program, specifically in the educator track. So she is a practicing nurse who is planning to make the transition to be a nurse educator. Her name is Florentina Tossi, and Tina, we're very glad you're with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What impact do you feel you can make as a nursing educator? I wanted to give back to the field of nursing. You know, I love my profession. You know, it's, it's sad that we don't have as many nurse educators out there to fulfill the need of all the um, 
the students that want to become nurses. I'd be curious to hear from you uh, as a student when you hear about the partnership between Chamberlain and National League for Nursing, uh, what that means to you. You know, going to Chamberlain, I've always felt that I was at the forefront of nursing. Now that I know that they're partnering with NLN, I mean, it's just, it's prestigious. I'm very proud to be a Chamberlain a graduate student, and, you know, I feel that after I graduate, which is in November, <laughs> <laughs> that I will be very proud of my degree that I earned, and I know that I'll be prepared to help students um, along their track that I've taken as well. We've talked about academic progression here, and I'm curious when you'll start your doctoral program since graduation from your master's degree is so soon. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I hope soon. Um, you know, I, I still want to see where my master's will take me right now. Um, and, you know, definitely that is in, in sight for me. Well, I'm amazed at you because sometimes as nurses we don't figure that out till very late in our careers. Now that healthcare is changing, the landscape of healthcare is changing, how is that impacting what you're doing at the bedside or what you see yourself doing in the future with education? Nurses are working more autonomously. They have to make decisions on their own and they have to make them quickly. With that, we need to prepare our students for that type of critical thinking. I don't know about you, but I think the future is in good hands when I hear these things. We can all relax and... <laughs> Thank you for sharing your vision and expertise with us. I, I believe the center is going to really be instrumental in um, impacting nursing education, the profession of nursing, and making a difference for the future of healthcare. Thank, Thank you. you.